Hey guys, this is Gigi from Juki Junkies, and today we are going to discuss how to set up your Juki TL models, including Juki 2010, the 2000, um, the TL 18, or the 2020 uh, for free motion. Um, make sure you guys look at our video from last week where we discussed the accessories to use, all your feet that are available for free, free motion quilting. But today we're just gonna discuss how to set it up. There's a couple of things um, that are very important. The very first one is you visit us on jukijunkies.com. That's number one. <laughs> number two is the really the most important is making sure that your feed dogs are dropped. Right here, when this is facing this way, that means your feed dogs are down. Um, when you put it back up, which is this way, they will not pop up just because you do this. You actually have to engage in sewing. So make sure that when you get ready to get back to regular sewing that you do that and you start sewing. But I'm gonna go ahead and drop them down. And what she means by that is you pretty much just hit the gas pedal and you'll hear the feed dogs jump back up into place. Yes, they do, they go boop. And then this right here is your stitch length. I want this set up at zero, okay? So just like that, just zero, nothing special. You wanna make sure that when you thread your machine that you always have your extension rod extended all the way up to the top. Having quality thread makes a huge difference. We have a preference of Glide 40 thread. I love the sheen. I love how it's virtually lint free. It's made in the USA. These are what the spools look like on our website. It's the gray spools um, and it's 40 weight. I do have Glide 40 on the top and Glide 40 on the bottom, all right? When using the Glide 40 or when you're doing free motion quilting here, you definitely want to use a specific needle so that you can have a wonderful experience. You want to use a top stitch needle or a quilting needle. I prefer size 14, that seems to be the happy size for me when using Glide 40. Now, let's talk about the pressure on the machine. This little button right here, you definitely want no pressure. So you're gonna re put that all the way up. So let me show you when it's down, what it looks like. You see that little blue lever going down? I want this all the way up so that I am not offering any pressure down there. And that's it. And then basically um, you want to make sure that you have your preferred foot. I tend to like my open toe foot um, this is the side open toe, but what foot you use depends on what you're doing. So you can have a closed toe one. I like open, I'm very visual. Also, if you are using this table, um, you know, you could use either one, but if you're using our free motion quilting table that is right back here, I took it off because I wanted you guys to be able to see the machine. Um, you definitely want a um, side open toe because this machine is going to be facing directly here, your head is coming towards your tummy. So you want a side open toe that really helps for you to see. And what I love is this shaved head here that allows me to visually see better from both sides. What else could I share with you guys? Um, um, really the bobbin case, nothing special down there other than your regular you know, bobbin case. But one thing that I want to share with you guys is I like to, now this is, has nothing to do with the table, but I'll give you some quick tips. Having good lighting is important for me. Um, I'm in a room where lighting is not the greatest, but I do have our LED light. I'll drop that link there for you. It's nice to have an extra LED light. I also went to Lowe's and I bought these big fluorescent lights that go um, on the top of the ceiling of my sewing room, and that made a huge difference. Um, what else could I tell you? Having gloves very important um and the other thing is of course having a tweezer so that you can bring your thread up and down um and being ergonomically correct is so important and i'm sorry that my head is not in here showing you guys but um i just wanted to give you guys a couple of those extra tips um being er ergonomically correct means that you do not have your go ahead and back up a little bit david so i can talk to them um it's very important that you guys are comfortable when you're doing free motion quilting because you will get tired if your shoulders are too high or too low. Um, you always want to make sure that your elbows are leveled with the table that you're using. There's several options for the table. You can use this table. You can use a free motion quilting table. You can also use the Gidget 2 table. 
which is fantastic because this drops into the table and it sinks down and you have a nice flat surface. I'll drop that link for you guys. Um, but lighting Check out the table, video in the, in the description because that's gonna go over all the accessories. Yes, I'll drop, I'll, I'll the link check that the link that we have there. Um, but table and lighting, very important. And also the chair that you use, you want something that's comfortable. Um, take breaks, you want to, you know, find what is your time limit on free motion quilting and never, ever free motion quilt when you're tired because you'll mess up, I promise. Ask me how I know. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel. We will be posting every Sunday at what time, David? 5 p.m. Eastern. At 5 p.m. Some a video for you guys. So check that out and make sure you follow us on Facebook and follow, um, follow, not follow, head down to jukijunkies.com. Also, we are going to be um, posting another video next Sunday on what is the video topic? We just... I don't remember what we said we were going to talk about. On it's going to be on the stitch regulator speed. Oh, that's right. So next week. Oh, I love that video. Next week. Stay tuned for next week. I'm going to show you guys how to free motion quilt without a stitch.